Hello AC Universe and welcome to Canada Crossing. Today we are on the brand new island of Midnight and I want to share some tips with you on how to make a beautiful island without using Nintendo Online. Now I know there's a lot of people for whatever reason cannot have Nintendo Online and I always hear these comments about how it's unfair they cannot make their island look as nice as people with access to online features and I think that's not true. So the whole point of this island is that we are going to make it beautiful and we're going to make it look as great as any of those islands you see on Instagram or here on YouTube, but we're doing it without using any online features. So that's what the plan is on Midnight. Now today, I'm going to share with you 12 tips that I have to make sure at the beginning, or even if it's not the beginning, these tips you can still use to set yourself up to have success without using Nintendo Online. So let's get right to it. So tip number one are money rocks. There are six rocks that are on your island. One of them every single day will contain money. So you never know which one it is, so it doesn't hurt to check all your rocks until you find the one that you're looking for. And then you just dig two holes right behind it and you start going at it. The two holes will allow you not to bounce back and you can make sure to collect all the money available from the rock. This of course is not a new tip, but it's a good start and it's something you should be doing every day to help you start to collect bells because bells are going to be very important moving forward for this island. We will not have the advantage to go to other islands or collect bells from our friends, things like that. Tip number two, your golden money spot. So every day as well, you're going to have a golden spot shining on the ground. You're going to dig that up. Grab the thousand bells that come out of it, and instead of burying it, you're gonna bury money in it. So we're gonna take 10,000 and bury it in our in the hole. So that's gonna create a tree. It's gonna create a money tree. We'll dig that tree out, and we bring it to our money tree section. So the stages of a money tree are exactly the same as any other tree, so they go in four stages from the beginning right to the end. So I do, I keep them all in one section. That's why I move the tree, so I always know where they are. So I'm gonna cut down the one that's no good anymore. And I mean, it's a great way to get a bit of um, resources every day as well. We'll dig that up. and we're gonna plant our money tree. So our $10,000 or 10,000 bells that we planted will grow into 30,000. So every day, we're automatically getting $30,000 from one of our money trees. It's an easy tip with a nice little bit of chunk of change. And while we're right here, let's move right into tip number three, fruit trees. Now these, this orange orchard is here because they are not my native fruit to my island. My native fruit is peaches. So when I went to a mystery island that had what we call our sister fruits, so our sister fruit is oranges, I shook all the trees and I planted 40 orange trees here on my island. Now your non-native fruit sells for more than your native fruit. So peaches on this island don't sell for very much, but oranges sell for a lot. So with 40 trees, I have 40 trees here. When I go to shake them and sell them all, all the oranges off these trees, I take home 60,000 bells. So every three days, that's how long the oranges take to grow back, I'm getting 60,000 bells from only 40 trees. Really, that's a really easy way to make some really good money. And tip number four, pumpkins. Pumpkins were introduced into the game last October, and they are one of the best ways I can think of to make money. So this is again a patch of 40 pumpkin plants. Yes, you have to water them every day in order to get the full range of pumpkins. So it grows three pumpkins per plant, but 
this, they don't take up very much space on your island, first of all. So it's just this little bit of land. And these 40 plants, when I go to sell the pumpkins, they bring me 42,000 bells. And that's every two days. So 42,000 bells every two days from these plants. Come on. Easy, easy money, guys. And tip number five, we're talking about bugs, fish, and weeds. Now, when you catch these bugs, fish, and weeds, yes, you can donate them to the museum, and it is important to complete your museum, but at the start of the game, it's not helping you move along very quickly and making your island beautiful. So my recommendation to you is to save them and when Flick, CJ, and Leaf come to town, that's when you're gonna sell them to them for a profit. You can always sell your bugs and fish to Nook's Cranny, but the specialty characters are gonna buy them for more. So it's definitely worthwhile stockpiling them for a while and then waiting till they come to town and making a better profit. So number six tip is going to be all about fossils. So we get four of these fossils on our island every day, we dig them up, and we go see Blathers, we get them assessed. But what we're not going to do is donate them. Now, like I said with the bugs and fish, it is important to finish your museum and it's definitely part of the game. But right now, we're, we wanna focus on getting our island beautiful. I'm taking this home. I'm not donating it. You know what? He might be a little angry, but he'll get it eventually. So I this is something when I first started playing my first island, I wish I did because I was always struggling for money. And I thought, and then all of a sudden all my fossils were done. It doesn't take long to finish the fossils in the museum. They keep spawning, so you still get four every day. And then at that point, I didn't need the money on my island. So it's something I thought, oh gosh, I could, I should have waited and sold all those fossils. You'll get over, with four fossils, you get at least 10,000 bells every day just from your fossils, usually more, because they're all slightly different priced. But I've never got less than 10,000 from my four fossils. So number seven, so we're moving away from the money aspect and we're going to some other things to do. So collecting DIYs is very important. We're, we're not going to be able to get them from other people because we don't have Nintendo online. So we need to make sure we're able to collect every, of course it's one I already know, every DIY possible. So make sure you get your bottles from your beaches every day. It's also possible to get up to three recipes per day from your villagers. They, they'll be one of them crafting in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. So that's at least four DIYs you should be able to get every single day. So that's really gonna help you out. You definitely are gonna need DIYs doing this island because we are limited with the amount of catalog items we can get since we do not have online to trade and get different varieties of items. So that's why DIYs are gonna be so important to this island. Also with DIYs, you're gonna make sure that you check, get the ones from the Nook Stop. So there's definitely DIYs in the Nook Stop counter that you're gonna want. And also Nook's Cranny. So there's a selection of DIYs that are in Nook's Cranny in the cabinet. They have some good recipes and you're gonna wanna get those as well. We are on tip number eight, and it's all about collecting Nook Miles. So the other form of currency that we use are Nook Miles. Now it's very important to collect these because you're going to need them for a lot of things moving forward. So we definitely need them for items and recipes from the Nook Stop. Also very important, all the items we're going to need to decorate our island, so that's important that we have those. And we're going to need them to unlock paths and terraforming and waterscaping when we unlock those. And we are going to also use them to get Nook Miles tickets. So the Nook Miles tickets are going to help us gather resources. There's also chances for DIYs and fossils on Nook Mile Islands as well. So they're definitely important to collect your Nook Miles. I highly recommend using the Nook, getting at least the five Nook Mile plus 
achievements every day that have the bonuses. Especially the one that's five, like this is times five, 200 times five, just to talk to three of my villagers. So easy, easy. And there's a thousand Nick Miles right there. So definitely get all these every day. It's definitely going to help you moving forward. All right, so we're at number nine. And this one takes a little bit of more thinking ahead. But it's all about pre-planning where your buildings, bridges, and inclines are going to go. So when you look at your map, you need to decide where you're going to put bridges and inclines especially because they are expensive. So you need to think where's the best places, where's traffic going to go. Also think ahead, are there places you're going to change and move the water? So I had a whole other water section behind the resident service building, but I knew that I would take that down and make it all open. So I didn't put a bridge there. I didn't waste that money putting a bridge there because I knew once I got terraforming and waterscaping unlocked, that section of river was going to be the first to go. Also, I had a whole third level on the back end of the island, and I knew that I was going to use the, the the top for something else so I knew that whole third level was going to go so I didn't bother putting inclines up to the third level because I knew it was going to go so it's very important to think ahead don't waste your bells on things that you're not going to use in the future we need to save them for more important things also moving buildings costs a lot 50,000 per move per building to move it so as you can kind of see where I went I kind of grouped my houses in twos ish because um, I thought that was gonna look kind of nice and I do like the way it looks does it mean that they're gonna be there forever no but right now it's they're spaced out enough that I can function and work around and when we start decorating the island it's gonna be okay and if I had to move them I could do, move them in sections so I'm only spending maybe to move two houses at a time instead of having to move everything off to the beach right away. I can work on one section at a time while I'm still gaining more bells as we go. And number 10, it's all about your house. Don't worry about upgrading your house right away. You do not need to spend money on your house. Eventually, of course, you're gonna wanna make your house beautiful, but your first priority is your island. So don't spend money. It's a lot of money to upgrade your house. I've only done one no, sorry, I've done two upgrades because I have the back room now. And it's fine. I have enough storage. That's mo mainly why we want to upgrade our houses at the start because we want the storage space. But also, to get to a uh, three-star island to unlock terraforming, you need to put items around everywhere. So instead of just putting things in your storage, just put them out everywhere. It's going to help you achieve the three-star rating. So don't worry about upgrading your house. It's something that can be done later. Do not spend your bells on it right away. Number 11, no, it's all about Nook's Cranny. Make sure you buy everything in that store every single day, up to one time. And I just mean, if you bought this popcorn machine yesterday and it happens to be Nook's Cranny again today, no, you don't need to buy it again today. Just make sure that you've purchased it once. So it's part of your catalog. And that's the whole point. You wanna build up your catalog because you never know what you're gonna need in the future of your builds. I don't know if I'm gonna need this candy machine, but I bought it and then I've got it. And you can always sell it later. If, again, talking about bells, you need to make more bells, sell it. Cause you can repurchase everything from your catalog once you've purchased it once. So that's what I mean. Build up your catalog, buy everything once, and then it's in your catalog, you need to repurchase, it's easy to do so. Also same with the, the items in the Nook Stop, so make sure all items possible once. And lastly, we have tip number 12, and it's all about flowers. Get the crossbreeding flowers started right away. It takes a lot of time and you have to water them every day, but again, we want to make a beautiful island. We want those different color varieties. So having the flowers only come mostly in red, yellow, and white to get the pinks and the oranges, the blacks, the purples, the blues, we need to start trying to um, crossbreed them. So I've set up these plots here. We've already got some started. We're getting some other ones. These, there's charts, there's tons of charts online to follow. The only thing is remembering to water them every day. 
and then you can start moving them over and once you have some you can water them and they'll actually start duplicating as well so that's another tip so start them right away you'll only have a few to purchase from your nooks cranny a few different types of flowers so that's take some patience and then when leaf comes you can start getting some more all right so that's going to do it for this video look forward to part two where we'll go through the actual designing aspects and how to make design work for a an island that does not have nintendo online so we'll have that coming soon also i'm curious how many of you do not have nintendo online let me know in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one